Look, uh, this is going to be a little unusual because, after all, Wilbur himself was a little unusual. But I don't want to rush the story. <laughs> The Columbia Workshop, radio's foremost laboratory of writing and production techniques, presents Wilbur, the Psychoneurotic Automobile. It's written for the workshop by Sylvia Berger and directed by Betty Todd, with a musical score by Frederick Steiner. The script is based upon an idea of J.V. Mellick of the CBS Accounting Department in New York. I knew what was wrong with Wilbur the minute I laid eyes on him. Well, this is how I first came to know Wilbur. See, I was being taken to market, but I managed to slip out of a truck, and there I was on the open highway, all alone. A refugee from her dinner menu. Uh, what's that? Who am I? Oh, didn't I introduce myself? The name's Clarence. I'm a duck. <laughs> Well, I felt pretty relieved to know that this little ducky wasn't going to market, but I looked around for a place to hide, and there was this barn. Oh, you know the kind. Old New England, ramshackle, no paint, about to fall down. So I waddled over to the barnyard, a very thirsty ducky, and I started to take a drink when... Hey, hey, wait a minute. Lay off, lay off. What's the matter with you anyways? You're drinking from Wilbur's water can. Well, how would I know it's Wilbur's water can for crying out loud? And who is Wilbur? Around here, people ask before they move in and take things for granted. Wilbur doesn't like to have his things handled by strangers. He's overworked, you know. Say, who is this Wilbur anyway? What does he do, run the earth? <laughs> Just then, something tells me, Clarence, you're about to see Wilbur. And I do. Hester, that's his hen, and Rocky, her husband, a sort of moth-eaten rooster, they take on a look like their eyes are going to pop from their sockets. And Bossy, the cow, stops chewing her cut on the half-beat, and then into the barn crawls this sad-looking... Broken down, melancholy old jalopy. Hello, Wilbur. Uh, have a nice day in town, old man. Uh, we were wondering why you were so late, Wilbur. After all, you started to market so early this morning. Uh, we were just saying a minute ago, wonder what's happened to Wilbur. Maybe he's had a break <clears> and... <throat> or something... Uh, oh, say, Wilbur, Bossy had quite an adventure in the field today, didn't you, Bossy? Yes, I did, Wilbur. I jumped the fence. Uh, go tell him about it, Bossy. Wilbur, you'll die laughing. Well, I was standing in the pasture with the other girls, Wilbur, Daisy and Brownie and Lily Bell, when all of a sudden I got the naughtiest thought. Why don't I jump the old man's brand new fence? After all, there was a beautiful spot of clover there, and, and I didn't get so much breakfast this morning. Hmm. Uh, what's the matter, old man? You got a pain? Maybe Wilbur doesn't want to hear any more about Boss's naughty thoughts, Rocky. Don't you want to, Wilbur? No, never mind me, Bossy. Go right ahead. So, I think. Why don't I... You look awfully funny tonight, Wilbur. Are you feeling all right? What's the matter with the way I look? Oh, well, nothing, Wilbur, except... Yes, the... except what? Uh, well, nothing really, Wilbur. Only when you came in, I, I thought your headlights looked kind of... Go on, kind of what? Uh, well, now, don't get mad again, Wilbur. But your headlights are as pale as a couple of eggs. Boss is right, Wilbur. Your headlights look awful tonight. Don't you feel well? It's... Because of the rain. I was straining them on the road. The old man had them on all day. Oh, that man. All day long? Yes. Now, honestly, you'd think that man would have more sense. On the road all day, in Wilbur's condition. What's wrong with my condition? Uh, nothing, Wilbur. Hester was just saying... The way you all talk, you think I was riding around on my last two wheels or something. Oh, why, Wilbur, you know we don't think any such thing. 
Rocky and Hester are just being sympathetic. Well, I don't need any sympathy. All bossy meant was... Skip it. Good gracious, Wilbur, you're getting awful. Look, let's skip it, shall we? Touchy lately. Well, uh... Well, I guess it's about time we were turning in. Nothing like the old shut-eye, you know. Uh, good night, Wilbur. Night, bossy. Come on along, Hester. Good night, all. Sweet dreams. Bossy, aren't you through with your cud yet? Oh, I started late, Wilbur. Why? Does it bother you? Oh, no, no, no. Go right ahead. Oh, I don't want... What did you say? I hang out on the gun. For goodness sake, swallow, will you? I can't make out a word you're saying. I said this tastes good. Oh. Oh, someone wants to... For Pete's sake! Uh, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I said something must have happened, or you wouldn't be in such a state. What do you mean, state? I'm in no state. Oh, all right, all right. Well, I... I might as well tell you. You'll find out anyway. I, uh, had a flat tire. Another one? Oh, Wilbur, how too embarrassing. Did anyone see you? Just about everybody in town, that's all. Oh, how too awful for you. Where did it happen? Right in front of Charlie's barbershop. They came out with soap on their faces oh, to look. poor Wilbur. <laughs> I still say it's your gasket. What does my gasket have to do with it? For Pete's sake, I've told you a hundred times, if I told you once, there's no connection between a flat tire and a gasket. Wilbur, please. You're precious. Holy cow. You don't have to use that kind of language, Wilbur. All right, I'm sorry. But look, for the hundredth time, Bossy, will you try to understand how an automobile works for Pete's sake? Well, I'll try, Wilbur. If you'll only not shout so when I make a mistake. Okay, okay, I won't shout. Now, look, let me try to ex... What are you doing now? I'm chewing. Do you mind stopping just for a little while, just until I finish talking, that's all? Thank you. Now, look, the principle of an automobile is really very simple. In some ways, you might even say that we operate very much like a cow. Only instead of grass and hay, we consume oil and gasoline. And water. You told me that last time. Um, yes, and water. But for the moment, we will limit ourselves to gasoline. Do you follow me so far? Go ahead. I'll stop you when you say something I don't understand. And yes, I'm sure you will. Now, <clears throat> the uh, gasoline, once admitted into once the... Once what? Admitted, once we take in the gasoline, it passes through a long tube, which is called the gas line. It is then vaporized in a series of explosions that take place in the cylinder explosions. following... Explosions? For Pete's oh, sake! My. Oh, my! Well, go on, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt. <clears throat> well, uh, the uh, action of the gas against the piston turns the crankshaft. The flywheel in turn. Uh, I thought you said the crankshaft. The flywheel is hooked onto the crankshaft, Bossy. You're shouting? I'm not shouting, and stop chewing. Stop chewing. If you don't stop chewing, I'll blow my top. The minute I laid eyes on him, the minute I heard him describe his symptoms, I'm telling you, even if I am a duck, I knew just what it was. Wilbur was psychoneurotic. Psychoneurotic? You're crazy. What's psychoneurotic? I'm telling you, Hester, I know the symptoms. It happens to a lot of automobiles that haven't had the proper care and attention. Oh, what does, Clarence? What happened? They crack up, bossy. Oh. The way Wilbur's cracking up. Well, I don't see where you get a right to talk like that, Clarence. After all, you just moved in here. Yes, old man. I'd go easy on that kind of talk. After all, accusing one's own friends of being crazy is hardly the Spartan thing to do, now is it? Really? I didn't say he was crazy, Rocky. I said he was... Look, haven't you ever known a psychoneurotic? Well, Brownie was stung by a bee once. She leaped around something fierce. Bees or something else, bossy. Oh. Psychoneurotic doesn't happen all at once, like bees. It comes on you gradually. You hardly notice it. Like Wilbur. Day in and day out, he gets up early... Goes to market, and then he gets a string of aches and pains. His gasket starts to bother him. He sees 
His wheels spinning before his eyes. His headlights get dim. He can't take the hills anymore. He gets jumpy and irritable. He can't stand noise or laughter. I'm telling you, we got to do something. Well, what can we do? What can we do? Why, we can... Nothing. We don't have to do a thing. There's nothing wrong with Wilbur that a day off the road won't help. And what's more, I think all this psychoneurotic talk is just a lot of nonsense. <laughs> You know, I, I've never yet seen it to fail. Never. The one who understands at least is the last one to admit that there's anything wrong. Take Hester now. You know, every time Wilbur saw that little brown hen, he'd just shrivel. I told her, I, I said, I said, look, Hester, I said, take it easy when Wilbur's around. He's one sick jalopy, can't you see? The way you jump up when he comes in and starts squawking, it grates on his nerves. Quiet down, will you? But would she listen? Oh, no. Now, that's too easy. All right, I say to myself. All right. Business as usual now. But the day is coming. Well, we're schmoozing around this particular morning, just keeping Hester company, being that she's sitting on her nest these Are you days. sure you don't want me to sit here with you a while, dear? No, thank you, Rocky. I'll be all right. Honestly, I will. Oh, but if anything should happen... If huh? anything happens, I'll call on Bossy. Can't I, Bossy? Sure, honey. What can happen sitting on an egg for Pete's sake? You don't think she'll roll off, do you? It isn't funny, Wilbur. Really, Wilbur, must you be indelicate? Uh, how about a nice new worm before I go, dear? I don't think I could stand one right now, Rocky. Thank you just the same, dear. You should have something to keep your strength up, honey. Uh, a few pebbles? A bit of eggshell? A smitch of grass? No, dear, I'll be all right. Really, I will. Well, then, you won't mind if I go out and get a few worms for myself, for will you? For Pete's sake! Oh, my goodness! You scared her, Wilbur. In my condition. Then why don't you all stop this jabber-wabber? Now, really, old man... And it... stop calling me old man. I'm no older than you are. Well, all I meant was... Forget it, Rocky. Forget it. It's my fault. It's my fault, and I'm sorry. I'm a skunk. I'm a worm. I'm a chicken thief. I'm not worth the oil to run me. We didn't say all of that, Wilbur. Well, why don't you? That's what you're thinking, isn't it? Wilbur's on his last wheels. Did you see Wilbur today? His headlights are as pale as a couple of eggs. Oh, I know. You don't have to tell me. I know what you're saying. Wilbur's on his way out. Well, I am, and I'm glad to hear. Glad. Glad. I still say if they'd listen to me in time. Oh, well, what's the use? To them, I was just a duck in the wilderness, yelling my fool head off. And so, of course, it happened, just like I said it would. And at a peculiar time, too. Just when everybody's sitting around cracking jokes. <laughs> get to the other side. <laughs> oh, this, this is too much. <laughs> to get to the other side. Isn't it rich, Wilbur? Is it a cocker, old man? Oh, that's my friend of your hitting. I'm sorry, old man. To get to the other side. Oh, no, I can't stand it. <laughs> I don't get it. Why, Bossy, honey, it's plain as a fly on your nose. Explain it to a Rocky. Uh, look, Bossy, you say, why does a chicken cross the road? Then I say... You got it, didn't you, Wilbur? I'm afraid I did. Uh, let me try, dear. Look, Bossy, this chicken is walking on this side of the road, see? Oh, which side? Oh, no. There he goes again. What am I doing? You know very well what you're doing, Wilbur. She means you kind of put a blight on things, old man. We're all laughing at this joke, and you burst in here but with... But the joke's lousy. The trouble with Wilbur is he's jealous. Jealous of everybody who isn't a broken-down old car that nobody wants anymore. <laughs> she didn't mean that, Wilbur. That's all right. Look, old man, Hester's a little high-strung these days. Uh, you didn't really mean what you said, did you, dear? Everything she said is true. Oh, now, no, just a minute. Well, no, 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 no. That, that's all right. It's all right. Soon I'll be gone, and you'll all be able to laugh and joke to your heart's content without me. Wilbur, what are you saying? They're coming for me tomorrow. Who's coming for you, Wilbur? The records. Please, Wilbur. Don't say such things. It's true, Hester. I heard the old man make the appointment. They dismantle me first thing in the morning. Oh, no. No, Wilbur, it's not true. It is true, Hester. I've, I've known it a long time, but I wasn't going to tell you until... 
Well, that's why I've been so irritable lately. Oh, I drove you to it. I did. Just because I'm nervous about my eggs. It's all my fault. It's not your fault, Hester. It's nobody's fault. I'm just useless, that's all. I'm useless and nobody wants me. You're not useless, Wilbur. You're the most beautiful automobile in the world. And you've got the most beautiful motor. Engine, Bossy, engine. I was going to say engine, Wilbur. <laughs> for him, all right. Just like he said they would. Bright and early the next morning. And then they set to work on him. Rocky, look at what they're doing to Wilbur. They're ripping out his upholstery. <laughs> Quiet, dear. There go the doors. I can't look. Oh, they're pulling over his fenders, Rocky. Rocky, do something. Do something. What can I do, Hester? You're the man in his house. Stop them. There were two of them to one of me, dear. Rocky, look at Wilbur. Look at Wilbur. He's naked. There in the middle of the barn was Wilbur, standing in his bare chassis. General Bossy turned her eyes away from his bulging axles. And Hester buried her face in her feathers to stifle her sobs. Rocky tried to speak, Wilbur. but his voice failed him. <clears throat> we'll miss you, old man. Thank you, Rocky. I'll miss you, too. Maybe it'll still be all right, Wilbur. Maybe it's just a false alarm. We knew a horse once, Rocky and I. They were going to take him off, too, weren't they, Rocky? To the glue factory. And at the last minute, they changed their minds, Wilbur. At the last minute. Sure, Hester, sure. I'll say goodbye to the girls for you, Wilbur. Daisy and Brownie and Lily Bell. Thanks, Bossy. Do that for me. <laughs> Don't cry, Bossy. <laughs> we all have to go sometime, Bossy. I know. I know. <laughs> but if you go, <laughs> who's going to tell me the difference between a motor and an engine? <laughs> They took away his remains just as the sun set. The first star of the evening had hardly appeared when old man Farmer Brown brought in a stu new stable mate for us. Wilbur's successor, Cannonball, the fastest talking racing horse in the United States. <laughs> was a wonder and a pleasure. But that's another story altogether. I was telling you all about the Goldenrod Handicap. Well, sir, it was a warm and sunny day, and the track was dry as chalk. Now, the dust. I said it was a dry track. Well, it was so dusty that every time I spit, I spit cement. The dust wasn't doing my sensitive mucous membrane any good at all. Always did have a sensitive mucous membrane ever since I was a little old weanling. Every good horse does, of course. Well, sir, there we were, charging out of the stock. Every time Cannonball opened his mouth, we wished Wilbur was back. And Cannonball's mouth was always open. He was the talkingest talking horse you ever heard of. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There isn't a spot anywhere on this green earth to match the sweet land of Kentucky. Yes, sir. Anyone that wasn't born in Kentucky has never been born at all. Uh, would you by any chance be... Kentucky bread, Miss Bossy? I'm from New Jersey. Oh, well, now, that's too bad. Because <laughs> you have real charm, Miss Bossy. May I ask what it is you're chewing? Just some grass. You want some? <laughs> well, just a touch, Miss Bossy. Just a touch. You know, I still can't get used to this here mangy no account grass you got up here in the north. <laughs> Seems like it just ain't the same vegetable as brew grass. By the way, talk about bluegrass, though. It reminds me of the time I won that Locust Platinum Cup. Uh, I never did tell you about that one, have a Rocky? Well, as a matter of fact... If uh... you were always winning, Cannonball, 
Why did you leave the racing business to carry milk? <laughs> well, uh, uh, what's that again, Miss Hester? I said if you did so well in the race. Well, that's a good question. A very good question. You must remind me to tell you all about that later. But right now, I want to tell you something funny that happened this afternoon. You'll never guess the little old boy I ran into. Let me tell you all about it. I, I wish was... Wilbur were back. Am I boring you, ma'am? Oh, no. Only Wilbur used to bring back stories about beer joints. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, that's a good one, too, of course. Indeed it is. But. When you've got Arab blood coursing through your veins, I never did tell you, but uh, I've got man of war blood on both sides. Wilbur was a brilliant personality. He was terribly high type. In fact, he was definitely psychoneurotic. Well, we all got our fine points and our failings. Now, me, I can kick up sparks with my feet. Look here. <coughs> Oh, you see that? A real spark. Why don't we sing Wilbur's song, the one you made up for him, Rocky? But it always makes you cry, Bossy. Well, I'll try to control myself this time, Rocky. Please, it'll bring him closer to us. Well, uh, you won't mind, will you, Cannonball? Well, go right ahead. Don't don't mind me. Uh, all right, then. Uh, ready, girls? Ready, well, ready yeah. Rocky. All right, then, let's go. We'll never fall... Well, come on, girl, sing. We'll never forget our sad farewell to you, dear friend, our companion so swell. We lost a kind neighbor of many good years our hearts are sore laden our eyes are filled with tears farewell now dear wilbur come back to us soon come back Come back. I can't. I can't go on. Oh, Wilbur, where are you now? Your poor little wheels in the dust. was with us for a long time. But time and tide, you know, little by little we began to recover. In fact, we were even beginning to like some of Cannonball stories. Then one night we all had a pretty frightening experience. Rocky. Rocky. Mm. What? Rocky, wake up. <sighs> Uh, what? What? Wake up, Rocky. I think there's something wrong. There's something wrong? What? Hey. You smell it, too? Oh, what's the matter? Oh, what are you two talking about? Do you smell anything, Bossy? Smell what? Oh, my goodness. It smells like smoke. Fire! Fire! Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, now, wait a minute. What's going on here? What, what's the matter? There's a fire here somewhere, Cannonball. The barn's on fire. Well, I'll just take it easy. Now, don't get excited. Now, fire! 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 Are you sure the door's locked, Cannonball? Try again. All right. Oh, it's locked all right, Miss Fosey. We're going to die here like dogs. Oh, Rocky, my eggs. What'll become of my poor little chicken? Maybe if I climb to the loft and oh. throw you out, dear. Will you throw me out too, Rocky? I'd like to, Bossy, but I don't think I could quite manage Well, let's it. keep shouting. Somebody will have to hear us. Oh. Fire! 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 <laughs> Our little family. Bobby, where are 
Are you? Yeah. Here I am. Mr. B. Marty, if you survive me. Oh, now, don't speak that way, Miss Hester. Oh. What's that? What? Listen. I hear bells. Oh, no. They're tolling the death bell for us. <laughs> the bells have stopped. We're dead. But when did we die? Oh, oh, a flood! Look, look, the hoses. Well, they're putting out the fire. Rocky? Yes, Hester, dear? I'm alive. I know I'm alive because I want a worm. Why, of course you're alive, dear. I can see your little eyes blinking. And, and there's the one who saved us, standing under the butternut tree. Oh, he's so beautiful. He's as red as a field of wild Kentucky strawberries. He's gold as the sun. He shines like a new dime. You talk to him, Rocky. What shall I say? Oh, something noble. Well, <clears throat> your highness. <clears throat> Begging your pardon, your dukedom. That's all right, Rocky. You don't have to thank me for anything. Well, well, I'm just glad to have a chance to help my old friend. Oh, Wilbur, Wilbur, you're, you're alive. Um, cannonball, this is Wilbur. How are you, Wilbur? How are you, oh, Wilbur, you look beautiful. You look magnificent, Wilbur. Thank you, Bussy, thank you. I feel a lot better, too. Look, everybody, look at my ladder back there. Look at my hood, Hester. Wilbur. Wilbur, gosh. And take a look at my headlights. On a dark night, I can throw a beam of light 400 feet long. Gosh, Wilbur, gee. Well, what happened to you, old man? What'd they do to you? I've been converted, Rocky. I'm a fire engine. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, that is an honor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. It is fire engineering hard work, Wilbur. Yes, old man. Is it a tough grind? Well, it's nothing like as hard as a job on a farm. And they don't let you get into such a rundown condition. Of course, sometimes it's dangerous, and when I'm out on a job, I raise a heck of a racket, naturally, to show them I'm on the ball, you know. But just between you and me and the lamppost, it's a fine job. Do you ever get lonesome, Wilbur? Well, I used to until I learned. Learned what, Wilbur? Poker, bossy. When I'm not working, I kibitz at poker. It's a wonderful life. <laughs> The Columbia Workshop has just presented Sylvia Berger's saga of Wilbur, the psychoneurotic automobile, directed by Betty Todd. The special musical score was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Today's program featured Sam Wanamaker as Wilbur, with Arnold Stang as Clarence, the narrating duck, and others in the cast were Art Carney as Rocky the rooster, Ethel Everett as Hester the hen, Earl Hammond as Cannonball the racehorse, Enid Markey as Bossy the cow. The script was based upon a story for children written by J.V. Mellick of the CBS Accounting Department in New York. <laughs> Igor Stravinsky, one of the most famous figures in the world of modern music, will participate personally in next week's Columbia Workshop broadcast when he conducts his own original composition, Ebony Concerto, as played by the Woody Herman Orchestra. In keeping with the workshop's constant interest in the new and novel, this program of unusual and experimental jazz music will reunite in Hollywood the two personages, Igor Stravinsky and Woody Herman, who gave a joint concert at Carnegie Hall, New York, during the past winter. The program will be under the direction of William N. Robeson. Your announcer is Sandy Becker for CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>